One of my favorite animals are alpacas, mostly because they are known for being cute, cuddly creatures that everyone wants to touch and hang out with. That's all fine and dandy, but there's so much more we can learn about them. Alpacas can offer not just a wonderful experience, but there's a lot to learn about their life cycle and the high quality products that are produced from them. For example, did you know that alpaca wool can make yarn, sweaters, hats, and even gloves? These are the kinds of things that make an alpaca ranch a niche farming practice. Today we are going to be hanging out with these cuties and learning about their life cycle and about how an alpaca ranch operates. On this episode of Ag Ventures, we are in Boratown, Pennsylvania at Illusion Ranch Alpacas. So come along with me and let's go ag venturing. I'm Tess, the Agriculturalist, and welcome back to Ag Ventures. In this episode of Ag Ventures, we'll be touring Illusion Ranch Alpacas to get some behind the scenes action of raising alpacas, managing a ranch, and running an alpaca gift shop. But before we get into it, let's get an overview of Illusion Ranch Alpacas. Illusion Ranch Alpacas is located in Boratown, Pennsylvania. The ranch is currently owned and operated by Robin Gilmore and was founded in 1998. Gilmore himself is a veteran, which makes Illusion Ranch a veteran-owned business. The ranch not only is open to the public for tours, but there is also a boutique shop as well. Here, customers can shop for products straight from the alpacas themselves. Additionally, events can also be held at the ranch or Robin will bring the alpacas to your event. Illusion Ranch Alpacas is the perfect spot for field trips, birthdays, weddings, and so much more. Today at Illusion Ranch Alpacas, I want to start by understanding the life cycle of an alpaca and what the day-to-day -day life looks like for an alpaca here at the ranch. It's important we understand what the life looks like for the workers so we have a greater appreciation for alpacas and the people who manage alpaca ranches. So today I'm standing here with Robin, who is the owner of Illusion Ranch Alpacas, and he's going to be talking to us a little bit about the life of an alpaca here at Illusion Ranch. So Robin, what does the day-to-day -day life look like for alpacas here? So alpacas are like, at least at Illusion Ranch, the luckiest critters on the planet, right? They usually wake up late, they get a catered <laughs> breakfast, they have an electric blanket, so you know they're not getting yeah. cold in the night, yeah, yeah, right? So alpacas sleep under the stars, because I think if all of us had the opportunity, we'd sleep under the stars. Mm -hmm. We have shelters in every pasture for them, but they really like to sleep under the stars. And that, by the way, that happens even in the snow time. Mm -hmm. So you'll look out here after a big snowfall, and the first thing in the morning when the light comes up, you'll see alpaca heads <laughs> popping up <laughs> out of the snow like that, Aww. like little submarines yeah. and periscopes, it's awesome. So we normally feed them in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, they get a, uh, a little bit of food. And the food that we have is essentially, it's just vitamins and minerals. You've been feeding right. it to them. It's vitamins and minerals sprayed with a little bit of light molasses. And that makes it very palatable. Mm -hmm. So we give each one of them just enough, right? Mm -hmm. They get fed twice a day. Mm -hmm. And they eat their breakfast and then they go graze. Alpacas only need a couple of things. They need good, clean, clear water, mm -hmm. right, and plenty of it. And I live on an aquifer. Mm -hmm. So I have my own little private underground river. So mm -hmm. it's really good water. Mm -hmm. They want grass. Now, the grass fields are actually hay. So I grow hay up there. We grow the hay all summer long. Mm -hmm. And then we harvest it, dry it, and store it up in the barn so that the alpacas can eat the same grass all winter long. Right, and Just okay. in dried material. Okay. And then they usually have a nap, right, because that's what alpacas well, that's what alpacas do, yeah. right? And then they have like an afternoon meal of okay. some grain and some hay. Mm -hmm. And then they usually play in the dark when it starts to come dark. They do. They actually they run around. in the nighttime. It's called pronging or pronking. They kind of bounce around, mm -hmm. right? And like they'll run up and bite somebody's butt like they're like playing. 
And then if they're really like sparky, they'll run up and grab somebody's ankle and then run with it, you know, oh and gosh. you're like, wow, behind them. They have them. so much energy at night. They're, well, they're fun. Well, they're sleeping all day, mm -hmm. right? And so they're partying all night, right? right? And they usually work their way all the way back mm -hmm. and then work their way all the way back and wake up down here again. So okay. the life cycle of, in a day of an alpaca is really, it's really, pretty if, chill. you know what? If we could all have that kind of a yeah, day. It's luxurious. I, I think it would be like, <laughs> Exactly, very luxurious. Yeah. That's probably why they're so chill. happy all the time. Well, that's it, yeah. right? And you see the alpacas here are incredibly happy, Yeah. right? All right, well, let's go hang out with them. Let's go hang out with them. So, the grass we grow here, we grow uh, three main varieties. It's mm -hmm. a pasture mix that was recommended by Penn State. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and they're really amazing at diagnosing problems with the soil and, and helping fix. Um, the grass that I'm holding is kind of a wider leaf stuff, and if you feel it, it's got kind of a sawtooth feel, finish to it. Right. Right? Yeah. So that's orchard grass. So we grow orchard grass here, and then we grow Kentucky bluegrass, which you know maybe you have at your home. Mm -hmm. The other stuff that we have, and it's too late in the season to see it, is white clover. And white clover is a high protein, but it puts a lot of nitrogen back into the soil. Oh, cool. So growing a crop that actually feeds the soil That's as well good. as feeds mm -hmm. the animal is, um, well, it's just part of the sustainability thing, mm -hmm. you know? Here we have all the tools we need to, to make our alpacas healthy and strong and mm -hmm. keep weight on them, um, especially coming up in the wintertime, because you want the animals to not to be fat, but to be fat going into the, so you know, yeah. exactly. So they're, not, yeah, so they're plush, plush. So they'd be plush. Hey, Annalie, this is Annalie. She needs a light. Hi. Nope, don't smoke. There's no smoking alpacas. Hi. Oh, see you later, girl. Bye. Nice to know me. <laughs> So now that we have a better understanding of the life cycle of an alpaca, let's talk about the kinds of products that come from them. We are here at the boutique shop at Illusion Ranch Alpacas to see for ourselves just how warm and high quality these products really are. Oh my gosh, it's so cute in here. I Thank you. This. I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. So which product is your favorite product that you have? Oh my gosh, it's definitely the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so the yarn uh, at Illusion Ranch comes from Illusion Ranch alpaca. So right. here's how that works. Alpacas grow five or six inches of hair every year, sort of mm -hmm. just like us. Mm -hmm. They get shorn once a year, usually around mid-May is when my shearer comes. So the animals get a close haircut and then we take the fleece out and it mm -hmm. gets processed by Pennsylvania mills and turned into Pennsylvania yarn. This yarn is black and white, but there's no bleach and no dye. Oh. So this is actually gray. Mm -hmm. So the gray alpaca is called Thunder and the black or the black alpaca is called Mike, right? And so you can see that it's actually oh, branded Mike so and Thunder. Cute. So when we tell you how long it is, we yeah. put our little logo on there, Aww. right? And so you can feel how soft the yarn is. Oh my God, I want to take a nap on it. Right? It's so much better than any other type of yarn. Yeah. Alpaca fleece is incredibly warm, incredibly mm -hmm. soft, and for some reason has fire retardant properties. So yeah, so I love the yarn, and mm -hmm. we have yarn from every alpaca. And one of the nice things about alpaca is mm -hmm. their color of their fleece doesn't change from year to year. So if you come and you want some of Mike this year you and Mike next, next year and year. Mike, oh my exactly. God, I love that. Isn't that great? Wow. Now you were asking about the softness of mm -hmm. alpaca stuff. Let me mm -hmm. trade you. <gasps> oh my God. This literally doesn't feel real. Wait, it's a baby alpaca? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really gonna start crying. It's brushed baby out. Give it a hug real quick. I like, actually think I'm gonna start crying. Give it a hug. Hurry. <laughs> it's so soft. Isn't that awesome? That so one smelling. of the things that we really like that we get from Peru. Oh, I have to keep it this way. That's right. Secret. Sorry. Is go on the shoulders. alpaca blanket. <gasps> Here's my other hot take about these. Mm -hmm. It's not itchy. 
precisely. Do you know what I mean? Alpaca is a smooth fleece, which we love our friends with sheep. Right. But sheep can be spiky. Right. And can make you itch. Mm -hmm. Alpaca is a really smooth fleece, mm -hmm. and it's hypoallergenic, mm -hmm. and it's not itchy. So you can wear it right up against your skin. What is what is the best selling product? I would alpaca? say the stuff made of alpaca. Right. Okay. So everything. <laughs>It's How made often from alpaca. Are you supposed to like wash alpaca? Like, is it not something you should be washing? So, with alpaca, mm -hmm. um, it's it's important to note that it is a natural fiber. It is right. a natural product. Mm -hmm. So, you want to wash it cold, gentle, mm -hmm. and dry it flat, mm -hmm. and it'll last for years and years and years. I have a friend um, who wears, and she's in her 80s now. Mm -hmm. She still wears her grandfather's alpaca jacket. Oh my god! So it's like a hundred plus years old or whatever. Oh my god. So yeah, so the stuff lasts forever, yeah. um, as long as you treat it fairly well. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's socks, toss them in the washing machine on gentle, cold, dry and flat, they're yeah. good forever. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just like any other high quality garment. You want to take right. care of it. You want to protect it from, you know, an out of control washing mm -hmm. machine. You know, we have a choice. Um, and the choice is, is that we get our, uh, our alpaca products from either from Pennsylvania, or from this country, mm -hmm. or from the Peruvian Indians. Okay. So, because mm -hmm. that's where alpacas are from, and they've been making their living from that for the last five or 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. And so, we try and, um, uh, we try and keep it local as best we can. Okay, that's right? good, yeah. Because that's good, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, Pennsylvania mills, Pennsylvania alpacas, Pennsylvania sock makers, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania scarf makers. So yeah, yeah, and, it, and people love that to know like where that they're buying and where you know the community they're buying it in. Like that's good. That's it's exactly right. The boutique here has some of the softest items for sale and it's pretty incredible learning about the behind the scenes that goes on to create them. It's definitely worth it so that customers can be cozy and warm and have these long lasting unique alpaca products. But there is one more important aspect of Illusion Ranch alpacas that we need to talk about today. So Illusion Ranch is also an agritourism hub for any event centered around alpacas. And agritourism is essentially agriculture and tourism combining into one to create an educational experience for anyone that's interested in learning about agriculture. So let's go hang out with alpacas. Sounds great. So what are your favorite kinds of events to do here at the ranch or to bring your alpaca alpacas to? That's a great question, thanks. Um, we've done uh, a number of weddings here on the ranch. They uh, come here to oh the yeah. ranch? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my God, Come here, we put so up cute. tents and generators and tables and chairs. Yeah. And, and with alpacas as part of the ceremony, it's really cool. We do the same thing offsite. Yeah. So today we've actually got two alpacas, mm -hmm. Dudley and Apollo mm -hmm. are doing a wedding up in Kempton. So, which is like really cool. So yeah. um, that was Stephanie and Ron who mm -hmm. help out here mm -hmm. and they're gonna take the alpacas up and the alpacas will like be in the wedding party and the whole nine yards. But we also do corporate events. So oh, okay. when a corporation has maybe an outdoor picnic for the yeah. employees or something like that, mm -hmm. they'll engage us to bring alpacas out and just kind of walk, the, walk around and work the crowd, if you will, yeah. with the alpacas and people take photographs and because it's not something, you know, you, you get to yeah. see all the time. Oh, you know? yeah. I especially like it when we get, because um, I'm a veteran, so I, I like it when veterans' homes come and visit us mm -hmm. um, or we go out to visit them. I uh, like schools, um, senior centers, and especially special needs schools. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool when folks come out here that have never seen or never fed or never petted an alpaca before, mm -hmm. to actually see them come out here for the first time mm -hmm. and touch and feed and hug and smooch on an alpaca. It's just like, yeah, it's just awesome. It's the best, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. This is Apollo. Mm -hmm. He's about two years old. He's a really, really good, good boy, um, young male alpaca. Mm -hmm. They usually uh, mature when they're about four years old. So this guy, we're training him to be a public relations or performance animal. Mm -hmm. So he's going out today to do a wedding. So he'll be the photography subject um, and a special guest to the bride and groom. 
and he's really, well, obviously, in close-up, very, very cute. Mm. So alpacas like their lips and chins rubbed. Mm -hmm. So he likes your phone. Oh my God, he's literally smiling. Yes, he is a good boy. He's a very, very good boy. So when we put on the halter, it's basically just to tell the alpaca that, uh, hi baby, that we're in control. If you notice, the minute I like touch the halter to his face, he just pushed his nose right in, because he knows. Dude, you look so good in black. You were just so slick. Oh, you're a good boy. Here, give me a nice big hug. A nice big kiss on the nose. Good boy. So, and this is my Dudley. He's a really good guy. Dudley is kind of his fun farm name. Almost all of the critters here at Illusion Ranch have fun, interesting, weird, funny, silly farm names like Dudley from the old Dudley do Right cartoons. The big ball of hair on top of his head is actually natural. It's called a wool cap or top knot. And uh, it's a sign to alpaca breeders that the alpaca has really good, dense fleece. So the top of the head can actually show us what the rest of the fleece on the rest of the alpaca is. You hear him talking? You know what he's saying? I want, I want candy. Say it again. And I don't want to go do this wedding. Say something else. Mm. He wants to know if he could stay at home. Keep going. We're listening. Come on. Mm. And have extra candy. <laughs> All right, you ready to go jump in the trailer? All right, you ready? Here we go. All right. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi everyone. They like to be big. We actually give them a mound of dirt out in the field so they can climb up on the mound of dirt and feel good about being king of the hill just for a second. Aww. Alpacas are so much fun. They're so silly. Like, they are like out of control funny. At the end of the day, when it starts getting dusk, they go up into the high pastures and play. They run around, they chase each other, they dance. And if you're really, really lucky, they'll treat you like they're one of the herd. And maybe they'll want to play with you by running up, grabbing your ankle, and running with it. <laughs> like they do with their friends. You put so much work and love into them, it's nice to see them, you know, make other people feel happy, so. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad it shows. I do absolutely adore these animals. As a matter of fact, I wrote an article some years ago for Alpacas Magazine, and um, the article is entitled, Why I Love Alpacas. And there's a story about, I was out mending fences, yeah. and now deceased, but my big stud Chippewa, who is a big red and white Pinto alpaca, mm -hmm. um, he was out in a pasture, and I'm mending fences, and he comes over to me, mm -hmm. and he's like, what are you doing on my pasture? And I'm like, get away. Right. And he's like, I asked you what you, so I reached out and I beeped him on the nose, went like that, yeah. and I took off running, because I'm a wise guy, right? Right, When yeah. he starts chasing me, well, they're like a thousand times faster than me, right, I'm not fast, alpacas. Yeah. Well, all the rest of the animals, all the rest of the big boys in the pasture, they start chasing uh, Chippewa, who's chasing me, then they're all in a herd around me. Oh my gosh. We're running together as a herd. Oh. They're like, so this cute. dude is part of us. Yeah, you became one. I, I became one with alpacas and it was, it was really kind of a life changing event because mm -hmm. um, as a veteran, I, I have sometimes seen days that weren't so good. Right. But to be welcomed into this alpaca herd from these group of animals that I feed and shear and take care of and all that. Right. But for them to say, no, 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 you're part of us now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're part of us. It was super amazing. Right. So after, I, after I'm running um, with these guys, I, I sat down and I took a, a break and just sat in the grass. Mm -hmm. And my ranch manager comes up and a quick pow, pops off a quick shot. Yeah. And I'm like, this is great. You know, sweaty Robin, right? Sitting in the middle of the pasture. I didn't see it until the film was developed because it was back then. Right. All the alpaca males were in a semicircle behind me. Oh. 
it was the coolest thing yeah. in the world. Yeah. They really sense. It's so interesting. They do. They so do. Cute. And they know, I think they know if you care for them. Yeah, they seem to be an emotional animal. Kind yeah, of. they are. Yeah, they definitely are. So in your opinion, just kind of a general thing, <clears throat> why is agritourism, you think, so important for other people? It's kind of going hand in hand what we just talked about, mm -hmm. but you know, why do you think just the concept of people coming to farms, just even to explore the farm, not to necessarily do anything, just to explore it, you know? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that's just so important for people to do nowadays? Agritourism is kind of a new term mm -hmm. for something that people have been doing for centuries or oh, thousands yeah. of years. And yeah. it's, I want to go see your farm, mm -hmm. right? So I guess agritourism sounds bigger than life, but for the farmer, for whether you own a ranch, mm -hmm. an alpaca ranch, or you raise cattle, or you raise ground crops. Mm -hmm. Agritourism is really important because you know if there's no if there's no farmers, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't eat these. But she's talking about crop farmers. Our mm -hmm. brothers are corn farmers, and mm -hmm. our brothers are soybean farmers, or brothers and sisters. Right. Um, if we don't have farms, we don't have food. Mm -hmm. So to let people know what the importance of a farm is, mm -hmm. like for instance here, so. We used to use man-made fertilizers to grow the hay to feed the alpacas. Okay. And I was talking to the folks at Penn State uh, Extension, and they said, well, have you considered alpaca poo as a fertilizer? And I'm like, why, no, I, does my Jack Benny. Why, no, I haven't. Yeah. And they said, well, here's how it works. They put nutrients into the soil, and it doesn't mm -hmm. burn the soil because it's very mild. And you can um, use what you have already here, yeah. Right, so all it cost me was a manure spreader. I bought mm -hmm. a little manure spreader. Mm -hmm. We collect up the manure pellets right. um, every couple of days. We don't use man-made fertilizer. Right. We get a better hay yield. Mm -hmm. We More get healthier alpacas. Mm -hmm. It's sustainable because the hay goes into the alpaca, mm -hmm. poo comes out. Poo goes into the ground, mm -hmm. better hay comes out. So it ties all back in with agritourism. If you tell John Q. Public, mm -hmm. right, uh, normal folks mm -hmm. that go to the grocery store and buy their food on little pink trays, mm -hmm. if you let them know where their food comes from, mm -hmm. and here's what makes this a clean farm, and here's what makes us biosecure, right, they're, more willing. they're a lot more willing mm -hmm. to go and buy the higher quality stuff mm -hmm. that local farmers produce. Right. Agritourism, especially in Pennsylvania, is so important because our farmers are so important. It's true. I think it's less than 2% of the world's population are farmers, which is not a lot of people to feed everyone. Right. Well, then you got 98% <laughs> of the world's population that are mm -hmm. eating what 2% is growing. Yeah. You can't afford a break in the food chain. No. Nope. So bringing people into the flock, bringing people into the fold, saying, here's what agriculture is like. Right. Here's what it's all about. I mean, we're not wading around in hip boots. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're not covered in whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways to farm. Mm -hmm. And the more we educate the folks out there mm -hmm. that maybe just haven't been exposed to it yet, mm -hmm. the better off everybody is. Oh, absolutely. Hearing about how special these alpacas are to Robin and how Illusion Ranch offers an opportunity for people to become connected to agriculture is so inspiring. They have fully transformed their land into an exciting destination while also opening doorways to the surrounding community to demonstrate more about what their land is all about. Hanging out with these cute little guys is a great way to de-stress too, so it's no wonder that agritourism is quickly becoming more common these days. We had such a fun alpaca filled day. We definitely learned a lot about alpaca farming and agritourism. I love alpacas and getting to experience this adventure at Illusion Ranch Alpacas was an incredible opportunity. We learned about the day to day life of an alpaca, how the ranch creates the alpaca products from wool, and the benefits and impacts of agritourism on a community. Anyways, a huge thank you to Illusion Ranch Alpacas for allowing us to record, edit, and post this adventure to YouTube. 
Also, a huge thank you to everyone at Illusion Ranch Alpacas for being willing to be interviewed and creating experiences where people become more educated about alpacas. Also, thank you to all of you out there for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content on this channel, please subscribe to Agaholics and ring the bell for notifications on when new videos are posted to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to go outside today. Oh my god, I stepped right in a pile of poo. Oh my god. Oh right. my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> it's so plump. <laughs> I was just rejected. <laughs> <laughs>